So in this lesson, we are going to be learning how we can customize the workspace, essentially understand the anatomy and some of the terminology about Photoshop. Now, everything I'm going to show you is the same for both the PC and the Mac. So no need to worry there if you're on a different operating system than me. Okay. So currently, I'm looking at the workspace called the Essential Workspace. Now let's go ahead and take a look how we can identify what that is and how we can also change that. So if you'll notice over here in the far, far upper corner, I have this little drop down menu that tells me that I am in the essential workspace. So if you are not currently, you can go ahead and change that. Click on reset essential. And then I'm back to that. So let's go ahead and just start cracking away and make some changes to this to make it look a little bit more user friendly for us. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little guy way up here to make my tools panel two columns. And you are going to see that it's going to be a lot easier to read. You are going to see that Photoshop also sections things out in a little more intuitive way. The next change I'm going to make has to do with which panels do I want. I have my colors panel, I have my swatches, channels, I got all these things here, right? Some of these I don't want. So very simple. All we do is right click on the panel we do not want, choose close, click paths, close. Now you will notice that when you right click, you get other options as well like you can minimize i can right click and expand it also note that i can move these panels around so if i want layers just kind of floating here i can absolutely do that a very simple click and drag and there we go you can expand this out make it taller shorter wider very kind of delicate there there you go now you're also going to see sometimes where there are panels that you want to use that are not shown here. So all our panels live on one particular place and that is the window menu. And again, it's the same thing for if you're on a PC or if you're on a Mac. So if I click on window, you'll see an alphabetic order. I have all the panels available to me. So for example, if I wanted to bring out my character panel, I click on that and then notice that the character panel appears along with the paragraph panel is a little bonus. And then you'll notice that a new column now appears for all your other additional panels. If you'd like to bring them in, so I'm just going to go ahead and collapse that. You'll notice I can very easily access it, expand it and collapse it. Also, I can drag that out just like I did with my layers panel. Another nice little pro tip is if you double click on the layer panel, it collapses. then click it, expands. Collapse, expand. Now, if I want to move this back to where it was, you will see I have few different options. Keep an eye on the blue halo. As soon as I saw touch ground here, you'll notice that when I move to here, I got a blue halo, a little blue halo, a little blue halo. Wherever that blue halo is, is where this panel is going to live. I'm going to drag mine way down to the bottom. And you're going to see a tiny little blue halo. That is where my panel lives, right there at the bottom. So I love exactly what I've done here. Okay, I'm going to keep this all set up and I want to save this as my own. So what I'm going to do is click on the little drop down where I started from. And I'm going to choose new workspace. Click on that and you're going to see here, I can name it. I'm going to name it as Illustrations by Akanksha. And then just click on these boxes to make sure it's basically freezing everything. And now when I click on the drop down again, you will see there's Illustrations by Akanksha written. So if any time I mess anything up, right, I go a little bit crazy. Let's say I delete some things or messed up.
I can always come back to that. Reset it. That's what's so great about this. It's just sort of like cleans up your mess. If you are using the latest version of Photoshop, you can find all these options under window and then select workspace. And now I'm done customizing my workspace. I recommend getting yours to look like mine, creating your own workspace and naming it accordingly. In this next lesson, we are going to learn about some of the basics of understanding of what some of our panels do. But also we can get our hands dirty with resizing, moving around the images, rotating, essentially kind of creating something like this and how this is more or less done. So first thing we want to identify is on the left hand side, we have hard tools. And we're going to be working with this essential tool called the move tool. Let's go ahead. Make sure you have both the show transform tool box and the auto select box selected. For some of you it may look a little different. It may look like icons. Just make sure that they are selected. Why are we doing this? If I click on that, I want to actually see the show transformation tools. I want to be able to auto select the layer, right? Earlier we talked about the layers panel. Here is my layer panel. You can see when I click on it, my layers that act accordingly. And by default, these are not activated. So let's make sure that those are in fact selected. So I'm also going to drag out my layers panel like I showed you in the earlier lesson. So that way I can have easier access to it. Now in my layers panel, this will be our first introduction to the layers panel. You will see that I have some names for my layers panel. I also have the ordering of things. It's going to become very important as we move throughout this lesson. So let's work on our first lesson of resizing and also rotating some of our items that we have here on our canvas. So when I click on this, you'll notice how I get a little bounding box. And you'll also notice that I have my tools up on top here as well. All my different individual controls. If that's not there, you can click on window. You will see that I have this options that comes and goes. All right. As I click on that, I'm going to bring that back. So if yours is not there, you can always go to window. Just like I said, that's where all of our panels live. So now I see that there. And when I click and drag on this image, I'll be able to resize that accordingly. But notice, when I kind of do this, not so great. So I click on this little circle slash to reset it. So what's the golden rule of thumb for you to do is, if you hold down the shift key, as you click and drag, it keeps it in proportion. Also notice, as the name implies with the move tool, I can move this wherever I want because it's its in own individual layer. That's essentially how Photoshop works. But now let's say I wanted to rotate these in a different way. If you'll notice here on the outside, if I move my mouse away from the selection, I'll get this kind of little button hook. See that? Just go in and click and drag and then it'll move accordingly. And when I'm done transforming, very important here, you have to tell Photoshop that you are done transforming. This is known as transformation. So right now, if I try to do something, everything gets grayed out. As a result, I have to tell Photoshop that I'm done doing what I'm doing. Earlier, we discussed how we can work with the little circle slash to tell it. No, thanks. I don't commit. Connected to that is this little check mark to say, yes, I do commit. So I have two options. I can click on checkbox or I can hit enter on my keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the checkbox for now. And then I have committed to that and that's done officially. So I click on this and I'm going to go ahead, do slight changes, move a little. This time I'm going to hit the enter key and that is committed. It's that easy.
Now that we have seen how we can manipulate something that already exists, let's learn how we can create this from scratch. So how is that done? Like a lot of other programs, we start with the file menu and we just choose new. And you'll also notice we have control and if you're on Mac, it's going to be command N. And I'm going to essentially teach you how we can create the same thing that we see here on the screen. So this is what it looks like when you are creating a brand new document. However, this might look slightly different depending upon the software version you are working on. So essentially, they give you a number of different options, some preset templates, kind of nice if you are doing like a web, film layout, etc. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go in, create my own custom layout. Let's change it to inches, width 11 inch. Height 8.5 inches and it's going to be a landscape document. And then my resolution, this is going to be very important. Resolution is basically how vivid is this going to be? How rich is going to be? Are you going to be printing it? Are you going to be putting it on the web? Typically, if you're going to be printing, you want it to be at least 300 PPI. That is pixels per inch. If you're going to be putting on the web, you can settle at 72 PPI. Okay. Typically, you don't want it to be too high. If you're going to be putting on the web, essentially for load times, you'll also notice down below, I have my color mode option. I have RGB and CMYK. Those are going to be the two ones we are going to be focusing on. This stands for red, green and blue color. And that's typically going to be for the web because that's how your screen read your images. CMYK is typically going to be for print which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. So it really all depends because the printer like literally the printing machine itself can only read these colors. So it's very important that we understand what are we generating the document for. And over here, we have our 8-bit and our 16-bit. And if we go over here to RGB, it will say 8-bit, 16 and 32-bit. It just really depends on how many colors you are expecting each of your documents have. Like 16,000 colors, 28,000 colors. And if you are going to go up to 32-bit, that's going to be an HDR document. So let's just go ahead and make our 16-bit. What is going to be the background for our document as you create it? You can make it white, black or transparent and we are just going to keep this transparent for right now. And then I'm going to also click on this save preset right here or there will be a drop down arrow in the latest version of the Photoshop software. What is this one about? This is going to allow me to save this as a preset so therefore I don't have to redo this anymore. Let's name it 11 by 8.5 inches landscape 72 ppi. Click OK and now look under the document type or saved. Anytime I want to use it, I'll be able to come back to here and won't have to reset all these things. Go ahead, click OK or create. And now I have a blank document all ready to go. Great. Now let's start building our document. Now that we have this all set up, you will see I have an empty layers panel. We'll also notice that all my panels have remained the same. It's great. It's exactly how I want. So our first lesson when we are bringing in things from the outside is going to be placing. Placing, not pasting, not importing Photoshop. And a lot of other Adobe programs refer to this as placing. So placing essentially means we are bringing in some items from the outside. And in this case, the item we are bringing in is going to be one of those images, right? The three croquis. So I click on file, you'll see here, I have two options, either to place embedded or to place linked. When you are placing links, essentially implies that there might be some changes happening to that file and you want to kind of have that linked up. So if I'm working with the coworker and they are making some changes, it automatically gets uploaded here on my file. We are just going to do place embedded. So it's just going to be static right here. 
inside of this document so i click on that go to my files and bring in my paste croquis file i simply just click on that and that's going to come and again you'll notice i have my little bounty box let's just move it a little and click on this check icon so our first image is placed let's bring in the other two repeat the step go to file place embedded select the second image garment let's resize it hold down the shift key and drag move it a little adjust and click ok or press enter go back to file place embedded and choose the third image let's adjust this image as well press ctrl or command plus t to bring the transformation bounding box then hold down the shift key and drag once you're satisfied hit enter great now that i have these let's see what we can do about some initial layer management you will see that it takes in the name of the actual document that i started with so maybe i don't necessarily want that exact same thing so just double click on that and rename it repeat double click and rename it to second croquis repeat the steps with the last layer as well and there we go so i want you to pause this video and do all the things that we did in terms of placing resizing rotating etc so in this document you will notice that around all of our images we have these little checkerboards here so these checkerboards indicate what tells me that my image is transparent so if i were to bring in this image and save this transparency i would bring it into let's say a powerpoint document it would just kind of float with whatever that powerpoint document's background is so would not come in with its own background it would just kind of float there kind of nice so we are going to learn a little bit of how we can either change the background to make it our own but then when we save a document how we retain the transparency now what we need to do first is discuss a little bit about the layers panel okay so right now i have my layers panel over here on the right hand side you will see this whole thing is my layer panel and we have a number of different icons down below we also have this little guy over here right in earlier we discussed that little guy right there and of course here is the name of the panel okay now each of these things has a purpose and you will also notice that other panels also and as we go throughout this course we'll be discovering much more detail than what we are going to discover right now earlier we looked at how we can rename each of our layers what we are going to look at right now is how we can adjust this background you'll notice that currently again it is transparent so what can i do to add on a colored background notice this little icon right here this little black and white cookie when you click on that you are going to see a lot of options and again this is going to be for some more advanced features when we get into our adjustment layer we are going to see all these what we are concerned with right now it was just adding on a solid color when you move your mouse over you will see it is called an adjustment layer so the adjustment we are making is going to be a solid color 
I click on that and then I can just go ahead and choose whatever color I like. We are going to get a lot into colors later on. Okay. And then oops, everything gets covered. Why is it getting covered? Because this is the top layer. So very simple. I want to bring it down to the bottom. So all I need to do is just click and drag that down and then just notice. I let go. And there you go. Now this is behind everything else. Great. And I can go ahead and just double click on this to rename this. I'll just say white BG and I hit enter. So I'm going to save this. You can save it in different formats like JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF or a PDF. For now, save it as a working file. Meaning as Photoshop file. So very important. So I'm going to go ahead and click on file. I'm going to choose save as and you'll notice here my save as type is going to be dot PSD. I'm just going to name it as Croaky. Okay, great. And that's going to be my PSD file. Now, why did I do that? I want to have a working file because this is going to retain all these layers. Very important because I want to be able to make changes to this. So as an example, I can come back. I could say, listen, you know what? I want this to be in the middle. And because I'm working in my Photoshop file, I can now move this and place as I want. So I click on file, save as, and you will see here in this drop down, I have a lot of options to work with, right? We are going to focus on two main ones. One is going to be my JPEG and the other is going to be my PNG. Now, when do we use one versus the other? Let's start with PNG option. PNG typically is going to be for when you are working with transparencies. When we save this file as .png, there will be no background color. However, we want the white background for this file, so we'll save it as JPEG. And what JPEG gives you the benefit of is being able to compress your file. Because maybe you were concerned about file size. JPEG gives you quite a bit to be able to really compress it on different levels here. So if I want to bring this down a little bit more or bring it up a little more, I can do that and I click OK. And lastly, within our layers panel, I want to talk a little bit on how we can delete layers and then also some additional things that we are going to be discovering later on. So deleting is pretty simple. So let me go ahead and I click on this and then notice here, I can delete with the trash can. You'll also notice that right clicking goes a long way, lots and lots of options. Here is duplicate and delete layer. We are going to get into rasterize layers later on. So if I want to delete this, I'm just going to go and select the layer, click and drag it to the little trash can and that goes away. But I'm going to undo that by simply clicking on edit and then notice here undo. Then here is also control Z or command Z on the Mac. So that comes right back. Also a very good tool to know about. Okay. So deleting is pretty simple. And also again, right click for different options. And then don't forget to undo when you make a mistake. Now go ahead and practice that. In the next lesson now, keeping in line with the same image and document, 
let's imagine a scenario where we'd like to manipulate the canvas a little bit. Meaning, maybe I want a little more space on the outside around it or maybe I want to crop it. So what can I do here? Let me just first of all bring up the rulers just so we can have some context of where we are, how big is our document. So how do we do that? Let's go to view menu and we are going to go to rulers and then that pops right up. You'll also notice that the keyboard shortcut is just Control R. There you go. And now here are my rulers. Now, if you right click on the ruler, you will be able to see all the different units of measure. So currently this is set to centimeters. So it's a good idea to have that. I think for the most part, I like to practice with my ruler for sure. So let's just take a look what we can do now to manipulate our canvas. This whole thing is known as our canvas. So if I go over here to the image menu, down here, canvas size. So if someone says to you, hey, we want a bigger canvas. Change the values accordingly. Now I have a little more space to play with. I can move that around, move around. Maybe going to just, just you can kind of manipulate it nice and easy. Okay. So that's kind of a cool thing to know about for sure. You also know that inside of this is also your image size. So this is talking about the entire document here, just as is now. You'll notice that there is a number of different options that we can do here. The main thing that you'll be doing is focusing on potentially changing the resolution of some of our images. Earlier, we talked about how, when you're creating a new document, the 72 PPI is going to be good for the web. But sometimes you may say, listen, I actually want to make this get kind of upgraded so I can print it. So you may decide that you're going to upgrade that to 300 PPI. Okay. Now there could be some problem with that because it could get stretched out. So you want to choose this option to make sure to resample. And the best choice for you is to choose preserve detail. If you're using the latest version of Photoshop, choose preserve detail 2.0. That is the latest and greatest technology in terms of basically like upscaling. So I want you to notice when I choose 72, notice the size of my document. All right. And when I change this to 300, notice the size now. It goes all the way up. So keep in mind the resolution while creating a new document, whether you want for print or web. So I'm going to bring back that to 72 as I'll be using this for web only. Okay. And now let's say we want to kind of do the opposite of this. Let's say we want to crop some of these things, right? Let me just bring this in a little bit, bring that in and let's explore what cropping can do for us. So our cropping lives right over here. You can see there is our crop icon. I click on that and you're going to see, I'm going to have a new set of options here in my tools. You'll also notice that I can now crop manually very easily, just like that. I can also choose my own ratio width, height and resolution. If I click on that and I say, listen, you know what? I know exactly what it's going to be. So let's just say it's going to be 200 by 500. You can crop a specific portion. Adjust the size. Now let's try some of the other presets. I'm just going to make this a square. 
and you can see I can now move my image within the square. Maybe have everything kind of fit in there nicely. I can see what's going to look like. And then finally, when I'm done, I can hit on this check mark or hit enter. All right. Now you will also notice there is this option to delete cropped pixels. So once I actually crop this right, everything outside of it is going to get deleted. So if I uncheck that, then they will not get deleted. So I can always bring them back. So I'm going to keep that unchecked. Click on the check mark and then there you have it. Perfect square. All right. I'm going to go into an undo, control or command Z for that. Bring that back to where it was just for the sake of this exercise. And I'm going to encourage you to pause the video. So then go ahead and practice this on your own. Now let's continue our layers discussion on the layers panel. You have a lot of very, very helpful options. You notice that there might be some familiar things like a lock icon. You might also see familiar word like opacity. Okay. And also effects and a few of these other things that are going to be getting into later on. But let's just talk about some of the things that are going to help us currently in this initial stage. Let's say I keep clicking on this image and like, oops, I don't want to do that anymore. I can very easily log this. So therefore, if I accidentally click on that, if you have a very busy canvas, if you have a lot of text in there or anything else like that, you don't want to accidentally click on something. You'll notice this lock icon is highlighted log on layer one croquis so when i try to click on that as long as i try and try and try still can't do it this one is still available it's not locked so how do i unlock it simply click on that layer again click on lock great and now it's activated again another nice little element is opacity so what does opacity mean? Opacity is like transparency. So right now it's a hundred percent opaque. So if I click on this little drop down, you will see that I can click here and just drag that down. You can see that I'll make that 50% opaque and you can see become that it becomes a sort of ghostly. Kind of nice little effect there. One little cool pro tip with Photoshop. If you notice, if I move my mouse right on top of the word opacity, you can see that there you're going to see a little hand with two little arrows. As I click and drag on the word opacity, it also allows me to bring it up or down in real time. We are going to see that in a few different examples all throughout this course. It is incredibly valuable. Other times you might want to do some other type of layer organization. You may want to start to group your items as well. So I have all these items here and I like to group them together. So they are all images. So I separate them all out from what say my text or my background colors. So what I like to do is simply click on the first item that's here and then hold on the shift key and click on the last one. And down on the bottom, you will see I have this little folder icon. I click on that create new group and that is simply grouped. Double click and rename it grow key. Hit enter 
and now I have got a group. So we have learned how to rename, we have learned how to group, we have learned how to reorder, we learned how to lock, we have learned how to do the opacity. Now we should feel very comfortable moving forward to manage our layers with our upcoming lessons.